Do you have a CyberPower PC C-Series and have no signal to your monitors? Well, if so, you're not alone. A lot of us are having this issue, and I'll show you a few ways and hopefully fix it up for you. So the first thing, and I know this sounds ridiculous, is to make sure the monitor actually works. I know, you probably did that. Uh, but when I became an IT person, I was forced to uh, take an oath under penalty of death that I would always ask whether or not the thing is plugged in or not. I have to do that. So now that I have, and I've assured that Cthulhu won't come for me in my sleep and drag me to the underworld, we can kind of keep going through. So we're assuming everything's plugged in and that it works in other places. Uh, the next thing to check is the source. So you want to make sure that on the actual monitor, if you have one that's not just strictly a PC monitor, then you should have multiple ways to plug out of it and into it. Uh, so you'll see things like HDMI or PC or AV, something like that. Usually there's a button on the side of the screen for something like import or source. And then from there, you can use the volume upper channel up and down buttons to select which source you actually have. So sometimes these things aren't too smart and they just kind of go with TV instead of HDMI or something else. Trying to stay calm through this process is difficult, but it's something that will help a lot if you can do it. And keep in mind too that, you know, the goal here is not to destroy the actual monitor before we get it working. So if you know it works and you have the right source selected, let's take a look at where it's plugged into the computer. So this is number two. Make sure it's plugged into the right place. So the image you're seeing now is the back of my CyberPower C-Series PC. This image is specific to the CyberPower PC, but it's also a great example of something else to look for. Many computers will have multiple places to plug things in. So if you see two different ports for traditional monitor plugins and or more than one place for an HDMI or display port adapter, then very likely there's a factory stock video card and one installed after the fact. So two different cards. All right, so this is very common if you have a gaming PC, for example, which this CyberPower C-Series PC is touted as one of those things. For example, and I don't want to get into the technical specifics, but if you can identify that you have both, try using the other one. So if you're using the one at the top, try to use the one at the bottom. You can see here that there's a single factory HDMI plug, uh, which is the factory one, and then below it, there's a row of three display ports and an HDMI. That's the fancy graphics card. So if it's not working and you have everything plugged in up top, then try plugging it in down at the bottom. So if you've made any changes based on this information, you can actually try turning off the computer now and turning it back on. Make sure the monitor is on when the computer powers back on. Now, if it worked, that's awesome. Give me a like and go and live your best life. Godspeed. But if not, let's move on. Step three. Try another way to plug in. Another monitor, okay? Variety is the spice of life. Now, I know, I know, if you're having to do this, you're thinking, well, if I could get the monitor to work, I wouldn't be listening to your stupid video in the first place, not would I? I get it. But the point here is that if you can get any of them to work, then we can get into the computer and we can fix it all up. And I will tell you that it took me a few when I first got this machine, and eventually I got in, and this is exactly how I did it. But I did have to go through a few different monitors first and figure out different cords and all that kind of stuff. But once I did, I was able to run through this. So the more generic and the more monitor versus TV, the better. There's no rhyme or reason I could identify, but keep in mind that um, every time you change the thing, you are gonna have to restart the computer again. Yes, it is ridiculous, I agree. But sadly, there's, it's almost always necessary. Again, make sure the monitor's on with the computer powers back on. This shouldn't be necessary, but it kinda is. Okay, so hopefully now you have access to see things, albeit not on the monitor or TV you want. If you still can't get it to work despite trying the other screens, go ahead and skip ahead. Okay. But for now, we'll do what is most commonly the problem here. Okay, It's going to be reinstalling the display drivers. Now, this seems to be by far the most common cause. Um, I found this computer is extremely prone to just throwing up its metaphorical hands and quitting when things get hard. Things like an HDMI cord being pulled out and then plugged back in. So here we go. First, determine what video card you have. So you do that by going to Device Manager. So to get there, you type Device Manager at the bottom of the screen, down where it says Type here to search. And then you select the program when it pops up. Once you've done that, then you can look for and expand this section called Display Adapters. You should see your video card or display adapter listed there. It's likely there will be a little caution icon on top of it too. If you right click and select properties, you may see an error like the one here. Uh, an alternative way to find your video card is to go through system information. This is also a good way of finding your operating system if you don't know that. 
You'll need that in a minute too. So down on the bottom where we typed device manager, just type system information. Then click on it when it appears above the box. At the very top right under system summary is the OS name, likely Windows 10, 11, maybe 7. And then to see the display adapter, click on display under components. Make a note of both of these if you don't know what your operating system is. Most likely your card will be of the AMD Radeon type if you have the same computer. All right, so what we want to do is bop on over to amd.com and click on driver and support. There are a few ways to get the drivers here. The most straightforward is to find your exact card using the search your product dropdown. Select it and hit submit. This will take you to a page with downloads specifically for your card. From there you need to select your operating system. We saw where to find that earlier using the system information app. Then select the one that says recommended, then download. It may take a few minutes. If you have an NVIDIA card and not an AMD card, you can do practically the same exact same thing from the NVIDIA site. So once the thing is downloading from either site, uh, click the little arrow at the bottom of the screen and select show in folder. If you don't see show in folder, you can always type down in where it says type here to search and look for file explorer. And once you do that, you can open it up and on the left you'll find downloads and the navigation and the file should be over on the right. Double click the file. An installer will appear. Make sure you have enough space and then hit install. If you don't, you might can browse out to where you might have other space if you have a different uh, hard drive, maybe you have more than one, um, or you might have to delete some stuff. But this isn't very big, so you're probably good. So hit install. The program will probably think for a bit, and then it'll eventually show you which version it wants to install. It should be the same one you told it earlier. Click install again. Now it's going to do its thing again for a bit, and when it finishes, you're going to need to restart. But be sure not to restart until you've liked this video as you'll be way too overwhelmed with excitement after the fact to remember. So like away and then restart. Be sure the monitor monitors are turned on when your system restarts. Good luck and Godspeed. Oh, you're still here. Okay. Or maybe it came back. All right, well, this is awkward. Um, but I can tell you one more thing that might actually help. And this is something that I've seen documented in multiple places as well. And it's the cords. Not the cords you're using outside, but the cords inside the box. One thing can happen, especially if you just moved the computer or just received it, is that an internal cord could have become unplugged. Disclaimer, I don't recommend untrained people go into their computers. But if you do, for the love of all that is holy, unplug it completely first. And after you've unplugged it completely first, from the wall and from the back of the computer, mind you, push down on the button at the top of the computer that turns it on, and hold it down for about 10 seconds. Okay? That'll release any kind of remaining power that might still be in there and make sure you don't fry yourself. And then the other thing you're going to want to do is to discharge static so you don't fry the components inside the computer. There's a technical way to do this. The very untechnical way to do this would be to touch a bunch of metal stuff. All right, Let's just think about the winter time up north. It's shocking people. You don't want to do that to your computer. You really don't want to do that to your computer. Again, I don't recommend people do this, all right? Please don't go rooting around if you don't know what you're doing. However, yeah, you could possibly go in there and see that there might be a cord unplugged. If it's obvious that you've got an unplugged cord in there and or you've got one that is you know, not plugged in all the way, especially if it happens to be kind of just on the other side of you know, the one that you've got plugged in on the outside of the machine, go ahead and uh, you know, pop that sucker in there. But again, I don't recommend taking the step unless you're comfortable taking a risk of possibly doing bad things to your computer. I'm only telling you this as information, not as someone who is going to be legally responsible for any damage. But, you know, it's a free country. If all else fails, you might have to get on the phone with the fine people over at CyberPower PC. But in the meantime, just keep trying different monitors and cords. Because that is definitely the least painful option. And it's very likely it's going to work eventually. Um, because again, there's just this weird sort of, you got to turn it on and turn it off and plug in something else and turn it on and turn it off. And eventually it'll work. It's happened to me two or three times now when I forget that it's a pain in the butt to fix this thing. And I just yank some cords out for other uses. I come back and all of a sudden I realize, oh, yeah, yeah I made the gremlin mad. Good luck with it. Leave a comment. If you have a question, I'll try to answer it. If this does work for you, please leave a like. And also, uh, bookmark this video because you absolutely might need to listen to it again. 
All right. Have a great day.